Bienvenue au Montréal. Good afternoon. So we're now going to start the official program for our 2017 PKP conference. To get us started, we have a few official welcomes, and I'd like to call Frederic Bouchard, the Dean of Arts and Sciences at the Université de Montréal, up to the podium here. Fred? You can't have a, a conference in university without having somebody wearing a tie. Now we have two actually going on stage. Um, I just want to say a few words. Uh, I'm also, so I'm Dean of Arts and Sciences, but uh, I'm uh, more importantly, I'm uh, chairman of the board of Erudzi, who uh, is of course uh, deeply involved in development of uh, publishing of sc scholarly research in uh, Quebec and in Canada. And uh, so I've been, but more importantly, I'm a philosopher. So let me say a, a few words as a philosopher. And it's, um, you're dealing with issues that are uh, especially, uh, whether it's technical or more in terms of principle, uh, you're dealing with issues where uh, human beings are especially bad. Um, human beings are very bad thinking about the future. And uh, you're dealing with the future, not just in terms of what's coming next, but in terms of how do we transmit knowledge through generations in a way that is sustainable, whether it's economically or socially or politically, right? So it's, you need to be very forward-looking when you're dealing with uh, any issues in the either publication or dissemination of knowledge. And that makes your challenge uh, huge, <laughs> because Homo sapiens is really bad thinking about the future. Uh, in a constructive way, I should say. We can think about the future, but usually it's, you know, not very constructive. And that means you need to convince a lot of people that the tools you're developing or the processes you adopt are worth, you know, um, distributing at large. And that takes me to the fundamental mission of universities. So universities are very good thinking about the very long future, right? Why? Well, because the fundamental mission is, of course, the creation and transmission of knowledge, but it's fundamentally about human flourishing. So universities are deeply optimistic, right? We think that if we co-create, transmit, share knowledge, uh, it's for the betterment of humankind. So that's, that's the, a, a noble mission and something that you won't find many enemies, right? There, there are very few people saying, we're against human flourishing. Um, and those that believe it, you know, won't say it or will lie about it, but it, it's easy to find partners. So this is the place where you're at, where you're dealing on temporal frames, where the species is maladapted, right? You're dealing with issues about the future of publishing or the future, uh, more fundamentally, the future of knowledge transmission. And that makes it very difficult to deal because human beings are not good at that. But you're dealing within an ecosystem, more importantly universities, that are in some sense built to think about the deep future. And uh, I wanna end this you know, very uh, impressionistic philosophical uh, musing about uh, what you'll be doing uh, with uh, a wish or a hope, uh, and if you work at Université de Montréal, um, you know, uh, an exhortation. <laughs> um, but uh, don't forget the students, right? So you're, you're dealing with, in some sense, you're, you'll be talking about economics or you'll be talking about coding, you'll be talking about standards, you will be talking about, you know, various aspects of publishing. But keep in mind that if universities are to be the honest partners in what you're doing, it, with what you're doing, uh, it's much easier for deans and for other uh, people wearing ties or you know, boring clothes uh, to get on board if you've got a very clear and powerful story as to how it helps the human flourishing of our students. Right? So it, this will take different forms depending on the organization you're involved with, 
But if you can think about how to get more students involved, not necessarily advocacy is nice, it's important, but beyond advocacy in terms of, you know, do they feel like they own <laughs> the means of production or do they feel like they can contribute knowledge in an easier fashion uh, by helping you out? Uh, you'll be on much stronger footing with your respective universities or university partners because you're talking about the future, you're talking about um, transmitting knowledge through generations, and you're talking about human flourishing in a very concrete way for universities, and that's the human flourishing of our students. So uh, I hope you all have uh, a great meeting and that you share a lot of uh, interesting and subversive thoughts. Uh, but uh, don't forget, whether it's in your conversations or in your future plans, how can you better involve students in your projects so it contributes to uh, their human flourishing and to our collective human flourishing? Thank you very much. Thank you, Frederick. Uh, by the way, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Brian Owen, the, the Managing Director of the Public Knowledge Project. But now I'm going to pretend that I'm here on the uh, behalf of Simon Fraser University, where I'm the Associate Dean of Libraries um, at the SFU Library. And as part of that, it's been an, I think uh, Frederick was alluding to this, PKP and ARUD, and I want to give a big shout out to Tanya and all of the people at ARUD who are co-hosting the conference here in Montreal with us, and all of the local arrangements you've been enjoying so far have really been uh, undertaken by ARUD and some of their staff. Is Gwendol anywhere here? He's probably out busy doing something else, but it's uh, been fantastic, the support we've gotten from them. But I do want to just, uh, you know, sort of disentangle some things because in some ways we've got two very large universities here in Canada that are represented as part of this uh, endeavor, the University of Montreal and Simon Fraser University. At the same time, we've got two very active and significant projects that inhabit that scholarly publishing ecosystem, ARUD, which is housed here at the University of Montreal, and the Public Knowledge Project. And I, I want to say a little bit about that because in many respects, uh, the Public Knowledge Project, um, we do a lot of our activities in largely a virtual environment. Um, a lot of the people that work on PKP are scattered all around the world. They work in different time zones, which presents some interesting challenges. But we're quite accustomed to working in that mode, which means maybe once a year at best, we actually get together at events like this and have an opportunity to, to actually talk face to face. I've met at least four people that have been working with PKP for the past year. This is the first time I saw them in person. And that's great, and you know, we really enjoy working in that environment. We have a lot of partners, other academic institutions. They range from some of our big development partners, all of whom are represented here at University of British Columbia, University of Alberta, the Ontario College and University Libraries. We have University of Pittsburgh, that's another major partner, and I could take five minutes to list all of the other partners. But the key thing is all of us that are here in one way or another probably have an association with a larger academic institution. And I realize I'm not sort of bringing greetings from SFU, but it's, it's a very good opportunity for me just to acknowledge and express you know, our thanks and appreciation for how large academic institutions are often instrumental to how we can conduct projects like this. Um, more often than not, um, PKP can't just exist purely in a virtual environment. We actually have to deal with the real world. And we've been very fortunate since 2005 that uh, SFU Library, but more generally, Simon Fraser University has been willing to provide that home base for us. So all of the mundane and bureaucratic things we often need to deal with, um, human resources policies and procedures, financial systems and budgets, procurement, legal details, MOUs, agreements, research grants. It's SFU as an academic institution that provides that home base for us. And that's a really key part of all of our activities. So rather than bringing greetings from SFU, I just want to use that as an opportunity to express the appreciation of PKP. And I'm sure that ARUD you know, has that similar, very strong relationship with the Université de Montréal. So that will conclude the opening comments, but now I'm going to segue to my next role here, which is to introduce our speaker today. And I could get off easy and say, here's a man that needs no introduction and you know who he is, but no, let's not take the fast, cheap, easy way out of here. Um, John Walensky 
is the founder and director of the Public Knowledge Project. And that goes right back to 1998, which is almost 20 years ago, when John was, no, I'm not going to say a modest, humble faculty of education professor at <laughs> University of British Columbia, but nonetheless, he was there, and that's where it's the whole genesis of public knowledge and that concept that it was really important that the work that comes out of the academy should be more widely available. That in turn led to what became a very interesting software project. Um, John has continued to be our director and uh, in many ways our visionary and a lot of the things that drive PKP come from John. Um, but he's got a few official designations too. He's the um, Kosla Family Professor in the Faculty of Education at uh, Stanford University. Quite coincidentally, and this ties back to my earlier comments about SFU, he just also happens to be a part-time professor in the SFU publishing school, which is a very critical linkage and part of, again, the important role that SFU plays for us. Um, probably many of you know John as a very ardent and persistent advocate for open access. Uh, John's publication, The Access Principle, in 2006 is one of those hallmark uh, monographs that people often quote or reference when they're talking about the development of open access. But John continues to be a scholar. And I'm going to give a plug for his latest monograph that was just published in 2017 by the University of Chicago. And that's The Intellectual Properties of Learning, which is basically a multi-century review of just intellectual foundations, concepts like the commons. So John is more than just the director of PKP. He's a man of many talents. Now, we made the mistake, possibly, when John said, so what am I supposed to talk about today? Based on past experience, we said, oh, what the heck? John, the sky's the limit. We may regret that. I think we did ask, you know, perhaps you could tie in the odd reference to PKP or ARUD or any of the other folks around the, uh, the room here. And I'm sure you will. So without further introduction, John, I will turn the floor over to you.